On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1971. We're going to be taking a look at Leon Russell, and he's going to be performing a song for you. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus, and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So let's get Leon up on screen, and also the link to this video is going to be in the description below, so you can watch it the whole way through there without me interrupting it. I strongly advise that you do that for this performance, because I might be stopping this at points. So we'll see how we get on, and let's see how Leon gets on. In my life and time I've sung a lot of songs I made some bad rhymes I've acted down my life on stages With 10,000 people watching Whoa. But we're alone now And I'm singing this song to you No, your image of me is what I hope to be. I treated you unkindly, honey, can't you see? There's no one more important to me. Darling, can't you please see through me? Oh, cause we're alone now and I'm singing this song to you. You taught me precious secrets The truth withholding nothing, no You came out in front and I was hiding, yeah But now I'm so much better If my words don't come together Listen to the melody Oh, my love, in their hiding someplace. I love you in a place where there's no space and time. I love you for my life, you are a friend of mine. When my life is over Remember when we were together oh, We were alone and I was singing this song
And there we have it. I thought I was going to jump in, but it's impossible to interrupt the flow of this performance. And there are so many points within it, even just instrumentally, the way that Leon plays the piano with the expression and specifically the expression pedal. And if you don't play the piano, you might not know that there's an expression pedal that Leon's using so well here. By applying pressure to the pedal, it means that you get sustain on all of the notes that you're playing. And as soon as you take your foot off that pedal, the notes now stop, it's a sudden stop called staccato, where it's a very short, sharp sound compared to legato, where those notes just keep continuing for a long time and blend into one sound. You can listen out in the intro, the way that we start with all of that sustain on what Leon's playing, but then just before he kicks into the verse, he then takes his foot off that expression pedal, gets that sudden stop, and then we're into the verse. And interestingly, I was watching a video with Leon performing on the Letterman show, I think it was, where they were having a technical problem, and Leon says we're having some technical issues here, and then they go to a break, but the problem was that the expression pedal was broken, so it meant that everything that Leon was playing was continuing, and it had sustain on the sound, when he didn't have his foot on the pedal. And the problem with that is a lot of people who don't play will say, well, we can hear the piano, what's the problem? If every note is being sustained for a long period of time, it's gonna start sounding so messy. Once you start piling up these chords, one on top of the next, on top of the next, because the previous chord will be ringing out by the time that Leon's moved to another chord. And by the way, Elton John was hugely influenced by Leon and they played together and were good friends. And having that expression on a piano is so difficult because it's the same sound for everybody. And this is something that when I'm talking about guitarists having their own sound, generally they might have a particular stomp box that they used or a particular amp and it was very specific to them and just their own playing style. But having your own style and expression on a piano is so difficult because it is the same sound all the time. You just push down a key and that is the note that you're gonna hear and you can't really change the tone of that on a piano. Of course, when we start getting into keyboards and synthesizers, you can do a lot with that. But having this expression in the piano is so difficult to achieve, and everybody knows this who started to play. And this is what Leon nails throughout this performance, and of course, he is a top player. What I love about this performance, but just him as a player in general, the way that he used to throw in really top technical playing for a fraction of a second, and then we back into a mainstream chord change back into that melody over the top. So it's never overdone, but it is perfectly judged. And the bridge in this song is such a great example of that because it takes you on a totally different journey to the rest of the song. But somehow we make it all the way back to where we started. And we're now in this familiar place. Somehow it's the part in the song where we have almost a hint of jazz in there as well. So it's so cleverly put together and cleverly put together in a way of composing and arranging in order to get that full circle to go on such a different journey and still make it back to where you started. We all know that Leon, having that technical ability on the piano, he started when he was age four, having that session level ability, and he did play with the Wrecking Crew, but he was the go-to guy in the 60s whenever people were looking for pianist to get down some keys. This was the guy that you hired because of his ability. But also, let me throw in there, with this performance especially, the vocal quality that we have. There are plenty of other performances where Leon is putting in a slightly different expression and being a lot more strict with the melody of the song that he might be singing. And this is all about raw emotion and feel and soul. It's not something Leon is doing to try and sound like somebody else. He's just singing this the way that he wants to, the way that he's written it, in order to connect and get his story across and get the meaning of the song across as well. So it is such an authentic delivery and only Leon can sing the song like this. And that's the point that when you stop trying to be like other people, 
then you'll shine as a unique artist. And that's definitely what Leon Russell did. So it's something that you can start to appreciate with this performance, that dynamic control, just literally on those keys, just playing softly and then adding a little bit more aggression in there and doing exactly the same thing vocally, going from a more connected sound with his vocal cords to then a softer, more conversational quality to the delivery. Sometimes you have to remind yourself that what you've just watched for just over four minutes, considering how engaged you were, was just a guy sitting at a piano singing. And when you look at it from that perspective that there's no big band here, and sometimes you can get a four piece or a five piece band that don't hold your attention, but to have artistry at this level just shows you the depth. And this is the thing that is so rare about artists like Leon, the way that he could play as a session musician being at that level at any particular instrument, multi-instrumentalist as well, by the way, also apply the vocal that will connect with an audience having that, but then having the songs. I always say it's the hardest part of the music industry of being a successful artist to write songs that people like and they connect to. And Leon had that ability across the board. All of those three things. A great indication of that songwriting ability is when other artists cover your songs. And that has happened so much with Leon Russell because the list of names and artists that have covered his songs is endless. Also mentioning the amount of people that Leon has played for and played with, because that's another endless list. He really was the go-to guy, not only for the session playing ability on the piano, but also on guitar and singing, backing vocals, lead vocals, and as a songwriter for other bands. He was just that multi-talented individual that everybody wanted in their band or writing songs for them. Leon had this ability to play that lead solo on the piano and also on guitar, like I said, multi-instrumentalist. He had that ability to take that solo over and take you to a totally different place because of his ability at the instrument. And that's in a different league of player and artist where they've got that ability to sell you a solo that isn't only good, but it totally transforms where you were in the song and the journey that you're now going on. We are going to be getting into Leon's background and some of the things that I've already mentioned about starting at age four. That's where that technical ability comes in. But also he went to school with David Gates from Bread and they had their own band called The Fencemen. Also Elvin Bishop, I believe, went to the same school. So there was a lot of talent around in that school at the time. And interestingly, his first name was Claude. And the reason that he used Leon was because he had a fake ID because he was too young to play at some venues. They wouldn't let him in. So he had Leon on this fake ID and that then became his name, Leon Russell rather than Claude. After he graduated from high school, he was then in the Starlighters, which was his band with JJ Kale as well. And JJ Kale is on the channel here somewhere. And they had the Tulsa sound this is something that they started to make popular and it was a mix of different genres rockabilly country rock and roll blues in there as well so it had a very distinctive sound for the time and in the late 50s he studied guitar and this was with James Burton and I do have a James Burton video if you want to check him out independently as well but like I said, multi-instrumentalist Leon was building that foundation from an early age to then have so much ability. This is why everyone went to him, because if you needed a guy to play the piano in the studio, he could do that. But then he could lay down a bit of guitar as well. And having that ability meant that now studios only needed to hire one guy. So he did a lot of session work in the 60s, being part of the Wrecking Crew as well, as I mentioned earlier. And in 1965, he did have his first single release. And in 1968 is when his album came out with Mark Benno, and that was called Look Inside the Asylum Choir. And for that album, Leon multi-tracked himself. Also throughout the 60s, he was writing. And not only that, he was writing songs that were becoming hits for other bands and artists. And working in the background as a session player and a writer, 
it's sometimes the case that those session players never really get any exposure for themselves, but Leon definitely did make that change. He performed with Delaney and Bonnie and friends, and this is in 1969 to 1970, he started to meet a lot of other musicians at this time is where he first crossed paths with George Harrison and a lot of these artists are people that he would go on to work with in the future. It was around this time that he wrote Delta Lady for the Joe Cocker album and Joe Cocker's here on the channel somewhere if you want to check him out independently but that album was co-produced and arranged by Leon as well as Leon playing piano and guitar and organ. He also played with them on tour Mad Dogs and Englishmen, so you'll see him in some of those performances. In 1970, he wrote Superstar for the Carpenters, and that is a classic song. A Song for You also happened, as we can see, in 1971. Technically, when we're looking at this video, of course, the album and song were released in 1970, but when we look at that self-titled album, A Song for You is the first track, and the amount of talent that got together for that album, you can tell the respect that the top musicians had for Leon in the industry and he would have crossed paths with these people previously in the studio you've got guys like Eric Clapton, George Harrison, Ringo Starr, Stevie Winwood, so many top names that all appeared on that first album. Obviously I'm not going to have time to go through all of the releases or all of the songs that Leon wrote for other artists but in the early 70s he did a lot of work with Bob Dylan and he played on Badfinger's third album and this was the connection that he had with George Harrison because George and the Beatles owned their own record label called Apple Records and Badfinger was signed to that. With that link to George, he also played at the concert for Bangladesh and as an album that was hugely successful commercially and critically and also that won the Grammy for the album of the year. He toured Leon Russell and the Shelter People. That whole band, the show that he did was massively successful out on tour and made a reported $3 million. In 1972, he released the album Carney and this was a huge hit. It got to number two in the charts and it was the same year that he bought the church studio where so many top artists and bands would record in the future. In 1973, he released Looking Back, and then that same year is when he released Hank Wilson's Back, Volume 1. And Hank Wilson was Leon's country music alter ego. That's the name that he'd use whenever he recorded country music. In 1975, he released Will of the Wisp, and this turned into his fourth gold certified album. In 1976, he started his own record label, and this was the same year that he wrote Lost Inside of You with Barbara Streisand, and that was on the movie soundtrack, A Star Is Born, and she sang that with Chris Christopherson. In in the late 70s he was touring with Willie Nelson and they did a duet with their version of Heartbreak Hotel and that went to number one in the country charts. They also teamed up for an album which was called One for the Road that they released in 1979 and this was nominated for a Country Music Award and the album of the year but unfortunately they just lost out to Kenny Rogers who won that for The Gambler in 1980 and 1981 he played with New Grass Revival. He was constantly touring, playing and recording and in the late 80s he also played with Edgar Winter and in the 90s he was releasing albums. He had his own independent label as well that he set up at that time. Leon was also one of the artists that played on Foggy Mountain Breakdown and he won a Grammy for that in 2001. He also worked with Elton John in 2009 when they recorded The Union and that album was released in 2010. And Leon was constantly playing, recording and surrounded himself in music right up until the end. He sadly passed away in 2016 and his final album On a Distant Shore was released in 2000. 2017. He had been working on that when he sadly passed away. But it's great to have a look back at this performance in 1971 at just the guy behind a piano and giving you such a great performance of one of his own compositions that then went on to be covered by so many artists in the future. 
Thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.